How to fit a Riga 24 volt motor upgrade kit to a Riga planer turntable. This one is a mid 90s Riga planer 3, but this kit can be fitted to almost any of the RP or planer range. There are a few minor differences just depending on how old your deck is. I'll try and cover those as I go through. I'll also cover what tools you need and I'll link to tools and I'll link to the kit in the description. Find somewhere firm and stable that you can put your turntable onto and put something down to protect your turntable because you will need to turn it upside down onto its lid. I'm using my workmate and I've got its jaws fully open because at some point in this process you will need to be able to get to both sides. I'll explain more about that as we get into it. And before you do any work at all, remove the plug to your turntable from the mains. Secure your tone arm to its rest. I'm using a cable tie and remove and set aside the main platter. With some duct tape, gently secure the sub platter to the plinth. If you've got one, put your stylus guard onto your cartridge. Release your belt drive from the motor pulley. You'll be needing access to that later, which is why I did it after taping the sub platter down. If you've got an earlier planer, then your motor will be suspended on two rubber bands. But behind the sub platter, each side of the motor spindle, there's a little screw. Remove those screws with the number one fillet. They shouldn't be tight. If they are, then somebody has uh, had it apart in the past. And once undone, allow the motor to drop into the cavity. Close your lid and turn the turntable upside down. Again with your number one Phillips, loosen the screw to the motor cover nearest the uh, platter spindle, just two or three turns, and remove the one nearest the edge. Slide back and lift away the cover. With your number one Phillips, loosen the screw holding the original motor PCB and remove it. Carefully unpack all the parts and lay them out on a smooth surface. I suggest using a tray because then the little parts can't go rolling off into the unknown. I'm using the new motor cover as a tray to tip out the parts from the plastic bag, which should include two double-sided sticky pads, a large washer, two longer screws to hold the cover in place, a sticky pad for the back side of the motor, and two little black circles to put over the holes in the original plinth, if yours was uh, a suspended motor. In fact, speaking of packaging, that leads me to the first black mark against Riga for this kit. Be extremely careful when removing the motor and the PCB because the motor is in here and these extremely fine wires threaded through this slit in the polystyrene to the PCB which is this side. Be extremely careful removing those wires that you don't snag them and pull them off any of the connections. And black mark number two is that this is polystyrene at all. Come on Riga, get your act together, get Smith's packaging to design you a compressed cardboard tray that these parts can fit into, inside a small cardboard box. That way, all the packaging will be 100% recyclable, especially if for the transformer and these other bits, you used a paper bag instead of a plastic bag. Back at the turntable, you need to disconnect the original power lead to the PCB. You can either do that by desoldering the two wires, or like I'm doing, I'm cutting the wires about half an inch away from the board. Then if you ever want to use the board again in the future, you can see where the live and neutral connect. Now you also need to disconnect these two switch wires. Again, you can desolder them from the board, or again, like I'm doing, but this time I'm cutting them very close to the board. PCB and motor can now be lifted away. If you pull the original power cable into the space a little, you'll see that it's got a, a knot in it to prevent it being pulled out. If you undo that knot, you can then pull the power lead all the way out. Depending on the exact vintage of your model, you may have a cutout here for the motor, which is cut out all the way through the plinth substrate, and all you've got to mount to is laminate on the top surface, or it may only be cut part way through, and you may have part of the substrate there, which provides a bit more strength. So after this point, we do need to be very, very careful when it comes to installing the motor that we don't push hard on this laminate because you could easily break it. You could take a, a brand new craft knife or I've got a little plastic scraper here and I've just made sure that there's no dirt stuck on the back of the substrate, <laughs> blown it off and I'm using a little methylated spirit on a clean microfiber cloth because we're going to have to stick down 
some circular pieces of foam so I want the best possible adhesion you can see the dirt there coming away on my cloth that's not a factory issue that's because over the years I have several times re-lubricated the motor bearings on my original motor leave it to dry for a few moments before you do any peeling and sticking with these foam pads that are supplied there are some checks that we need to carry out first. Check that the frequency marking on the board in the kit corresponds to your local mains frequency. When it comes to sticking these foam pads on, the foam pads that are supplied are one thick pad and one thin pad. And depending on exactly what vintage of deck you've got, you will need one or the other or possibly both pads in order to stick the motor in place. How do you determine which pad or whether you need both pads? Let me show you. This is not how it says in the instructions, but this is how I'm doing it. Put the PCB next to the cutout for the motor and then put your motor into its hole and let it sit down on the flat surface. You need to make sure that the height of your motor pulley corresponds with the height of your sub platter so that both belts on the 45 and the 33 rpm settings will go round the sub platter and that they line up and don't fall off and also that your motor pulley doesn't hit the bottom side of the main platter as per this diagram here put the thin washer in first put the motor on and then loop sideways through the clear cover at the sub platter and the motor spindle and if your turntable like mine has got a smoked cover you might need to shine a torch in there and then loop carefully at how the motor pulley lines up with the sub platter in my case i can see that it would be too high my 33 rpm belt would just fall off then try your thick foam washer if that isn't right try both washers in my case i already know that i'm going to need both and look again and make sure they line up. But whatever else you do, don't stick the motor down now and then try and fit the board because you'll see what happens with the wires. You need to lift the motor back out, put the board down into place, followed by the motor. But there's something very important that we have to do first, and that is we have to connect these switch wires that we cut from the old board to the new board in the position marked SW. Now this bit is extremely fiddly. Strip the ends of your wire and then fortunately the polarity doesn't matter and put your wires through the holes and solder the wires into position on the board. Now you can stick whichever foam ring it is that you need into place. In my case I need both but remember you might need one or other or both. Peel the backing off one side of the first ring and then put it into place and get it centered on the hole which you can do with your index finger or maybe a screwdriver or by eye if you feel confident and just very gently stick it down press it down all the way around only gently take the second paper side off do the same with your second ring if you're having to put both on making sure to get it centrally again gently rub it round you don't want to risk breaking the laminate remove the final piece of paper remember to make sure that you've got the board in place and that you're bringing the motor through the board orient the motor so that the connections are down in this corner closest to where they come off the board drop your motor in centrally and straight down onto the sticky pad just give it a very very light press all the way around the idea behind using foam pads is that it isolates the motor from the plinth get the other small piece of round foam and stick it on the back of the motor that contacts the cover so that the cover helps to hold the motor up into place and it isn't 100% reliant upon the uh, sticky instructions tell you to stick it into the cover there's no mark or pip or anything on the cover that gives you an alignment they could quite easily have scribed two crosshairs in the tool that makes this so that you uh, can get that central another black mark for Riga they're not making it uh, DIY friendly which is why I've chosen to stick it to the motor instead orient your wires so that they're not going to get trapped here and you can put your new cover into place remembering to put the end with these two holes at the back because that's where the uh, new power supply connects in and the second hole is for the compatible TTPSU if you should uh, so choose to further upgrade it and because there's some extra thickness with the PCB use the longer screws that come in the kit 
put this one nearest the spindle first, but for these screws you'll need a Phillips number two. Slot the cover into place and then you can do the second screw at the back end. Nip it down, just moderately hand tight, don't go mad, but similarly don't leave it loose. You don't want anything to uh, be able to vibrate. Also in the kit is a washer, looks to be about a millimetre thick or slightly less, which fits over this. If you should find that you're having difficulty lining up the pulley and the subplatter, you can undo the subplatter bearing from this nut here, take it out from the top side and put this washer in on the top side, put it back in and screw the nut up to raise the height of the subplatter. The instructions do say you should almost never need to do that. It's there in case you do. If I put the turntable back the right way up now, you can see now how these two pulleys here need to line up with the middle of the subplatter and how if you feel the need you can always raise the height of this subplatter using that washer I just showed you. And now you can gently remove your tape and you can reattach your drive belt. You can double check belt stays on the subplatter in both speed positions and if you're bothered you can put the two little black dicky circles over the holes previously held the motor in place. If you wanted to make double sure that your motor is properly stuck to the backside of the laminate, you could have left the motor cover off, turned your turntable back the right way, from underneath push the motor up whilst holding or pressing down on the uh, laminate. If you unwrap your power supply, you can take this end and plug it in at the back to use the uh, conventional 12 volts. If you've got a TTPSU, you would plug that into there, but do not plug both in at the same time. You don't need them. It's one or the other. Big warning there. You might damage the board if you plugged both in at the same time, or you might damage the TTPSU. I've put my turntable back into place, plugged it in. When I switch it on, it works. But before I put the platter back and play my first record, I'm going to use a Q-tip and some meths, clean the pulleys, and the subplatter surface and if you've been handling it give the belt a clean make sure that you haven't got any grease from your fingers on it allow that to dry and you can put your platter back well that startup is uh, a big improvement on what it was happy listening if you got value from this video please support the channel or this video by liking it and sharing it and i shall see you next time